and I look at Lemur and like what the last update they did was 2017. And literally I haven't done an update in longer than that. I just wow. got it. So it was working and it's great, super duper stable. And so I tweaked and fiddled a lot in 2012, I think when it came out and 13, yeah, kind of morphed some stuff. And I'm not sure I've done a ton since then. Um, and so, but I, all I can tell you then is if you get it working, I mean, it's quite stable and uh, super useful and I haven't gotten rid of it. I became a certified trainer for Ableton in 2016. And in order to do that, I had to learn the push. And I was like, oh. man, I already got enough stuff going on. I don't need another controller and all this, but I ended up doing it and I'm happy I did. And it's awesome, but I have both. So I use push two and my iPad with lemur. And between those two, I can get around all of Ableton really nice. And then my MIDI keyboard and then my trombone stuff. And um, so I, I don't know when I'll get rid of it. I guess when my iPad breaks, I'll have to figure something out if I'm going to upgrade or the lemur app. So this is an iPad 4. It's old, like 2013. And I don't know what that dimension is. Is it a 9-inch tablet? Uh, I don't know. Um, but... You know, I mean, there's my hand. It's bigger than the whole thing. So right. even if you're only seeing this size and you have your iPad Pro, I mean, that, that's not the end of the world. There's there's some wasted space in there, but you could still... Uh, plus, that, yeah. that could just be one page. So my main page is here. Look, I have five pages that I go between. Okay. So this is my DJ page. This is how I control the crossfade between cover songs. So here's James Brown and here's... Uh, madonna or whatever and I, I go between them um volume dj effects beat repeat and all this and here's the faders okay for, for my my um drum loops and stuff and sweet man like that i can mute everything with one swipe it's like awesome oh um nice so i come back here a lot but then i go oh well i want to um switch sounds on my synth so i go to this middle one there and I have those pads but now I want to play Rhodes so I, I can switch them really quick that's hit wow I love that yeah and so I'm going between those pages and I'm, I don't even care about Ableton at that point I'm literally looking here nice. and going oh yeah man that's really grooving and I dig it and let's say like and then I can loop at any time oh but I'm afraid to lose it <laughs> If I want to go here, I'm going to mute that bass. So we're hearing what I just looped, which is here in this looper. So how would you trigger the loop? All of it's MIDI mapped, and it's this is controlling a looper that's on my channels for the for the keyboards. So I could do Omnisphere or Ableton stuff, which actually I have uh, native instruments too. So all those three things go feed this looper. And so you know, I, it's like another instrument. I I'm, I go to this all the time, so I'm super comfortable with it. Um, start it up. Add that bass back in. I want to adjust the volume of the bass. And now I'll fade in that track. Nice. Go stop the sing. Stop all. Touch OSC or touchable is one. Touchable. That's the one. It auto sees your, your set. That's cooler. This I had to MIDI map everything. Um, but I haven't messed with the MIDI mapping literally in probably seven, eight years. So I so just know. Wait, you you uh, you do designed the the uh, the interface, all of that. I you... did, and some of it I did like you though. I found a template for like oh. I think this originally was um, this DJ thing. So like when it's playing, uh, let me play that again like that. Or, nice. 
that i i didn't do i got that from some other template and i pulled that little piece in and then i designed my own i was oh. like I, I need to control the faders I, like you i, yeah. I want to be able to do that then i go to my trombone the song's playing and i turn on my acoustic mic for my trombone nice. i record in here then i can go to my my mute and actually you can hear that yeah. uh, my best brass mute and then that's when i put in my um, electric trombone stuff. Um, turn on my Octavox, my harmonizer. So when I'm when I'm in trombone, I'm gonna do something with that. I, I just it's, I just go there. It's like okay, I'm playing, I'm DJing, it's all fine. And then shit, I haven't played my trombone in ten minutes. You know, go here, turn it on, and then loop. And um, now I want to adjust my talking voice. You know, there it is, softer, softer, softer. Wow. I have a I have a vocoder hooked on there. So, ah, and take off my talk. My talk voice, nice. that affects so well. Oh, so I'm actually talking. That's incredible. That's cool. And I can loop that right down. I just reversed it. I, I could talk over it too. I could talk over it too. I could talk over it too. The speed. So it gets it gets nutty. Um but I couldn't do this stuff live if I didn't have the lemur app. So when I saw your email, I was like, you know, that's smart. It's totally cool. Um, and, and you're you're controlling everything in Ableton. That, that everything you were just doing was manipulating yeah. Ableton. Yeah. So then, if you want to see, let's see, and like you got five pages. Was that what it was? Yeah, five pages. And and I like that you said something earlier that I really. It took me a couple of years to go. Wait a minute. You got to make some choices, man. Yeah. <laughs> you're not. You don't want to have the whole world open to you when you're playing an hour and a half set it's just no. like you need pick and choose the coolest shit so i started paring it down and stopped thinking oh well, what if i possibly wanted this other uh you know delay you know it's like you don't get that <laughs> I, have to, I have i have two different kind of delays that's good enough you know nice. um so like let's say you can see stuff turn on here now watch i'll turn off my track 17 talking but you couldn't hear me because i turned it off on the lemur so so that's a pretty cool thing and that vocoder is called orange vocoder and you can see it's off as soon as i touch a button turns it on and then i have to play the keyboard to make it to do something but there it is and then i can make it wider nice and yeah there's a lot of the versatility is really hip and um yeah, so I have my mic thing, my synths, and my trombone, and the DJ. And I rarely get to this anymore, but this is kind of similar to that thing. Watch, I'll turn on a synth. Let's turn on a piano. And so that's similar to the push as well, but this is even easier because it's flat and I can do crazy stuff with it. And if I add the vocoder, that's pretty cool. And now that's with the piano. So, yeah. I would say, um, just start with a simple thing like that. And actually maybe that, that template you have is cool enough and don't worry about the sizing of it. I get it. Cause that stuff bothers me too. I want it to look all pretty and <laughs> be, be well, awesome. I, I mean, I see that your hands look, you must be a big dude. Cause your hands look huge, at least <laughs> from the camera and my concern is that I'm not that dexterous and I don't want to, oh, you know, smudge into a fader. 
I just wanted it big enough to be easy. I don't have to look at it too much. Well, on that editor, literally, I've not opened this up for several years. You can resize all these. So if you wanted three big faders and, yeah. and like this, you know, I mean, that stuff is awesome. You can just put it wherever you want, make it your own color. Yeah, if you've got color issues, color blindness, and go, mm -hmm. there's no way in hell I can miss that. But yeah. Right. And you could have several pages, so, um, but you could have kind of endless pages as long as you knew how to access them, too. Huh. And, and, and they're, uh, they're on tabs on yours, right? Yes. Yeah, I made them tabs so that at the top, 